Previously on Hardy Boys. This is Paul McFarlane. He's the dean of Rosegrave Academy. He knew your mother. You knew her? We were in the same class. She was always a step ahead, no matter what you threw at her. I had this funny feeling when he was telling me like there was something he wouldn't say. Laura and Paul, love is definitely in the air. Dean McFarlane is mom's high school sweetheart. Ew. <laughs> Joe! Looks like the same thing he was wearing. You're looking at that piece of cloth like you expected to talk to you. Just ask someone who knows about that stuff. This overcoat is from a uniform manufacturer, possibly military, but judging by the color, I'd say most likely police issue. So maybe we're looking for some dirty cop from Dixon City. Yeah, or maybe someone a little close to home. A couple of hours ago, the man that they caught at the farm escaped. Confirm that the prisoner has escaped custody. Citizens should be advised that he's armed and dangerous and to take the necessary precautions. You're getting sloppy, and you know how I hate cleaning up messes. I escaped from their jail, didn't I? You got caught twice by a group of kids. You hired me to get the object. I will get the object for you. It's become increasingly difficult to believe what you have to say. I'm hanging up now. If you hang up, I will get the piece, and I will take it to another buyer. You just made a grave mistake. Is that a threat? It's a promise. Hi, Joe. Didn't hear you there. Well, that's too bad. Hearing people is very important and useful. Mm-hmm. What are you doing today? Me and Callie are gonna go to Rosegrave, talk to Dee McFarlane. See if he can tell us why Mom left town after high school. You? Yep. Well, I'm gonna find out what crooked cop this came from. I'm gonna get them to confess that they were the buyer at the brick factory. Why would anyone admit that to you? Even if they did, no one's gonna believe your word over a cop's, Joe. They will. Because I'm wearing a wire. I'm using these headphones as a microphone. And I just recorded everything you said. It's a super plan, buddy. It's a prototype, all right? It'll work. Joe, you're not wearing a wire, okay? I need you to stay home until the cops find the tall man, or at least until I get back. That's not fair. Life's not fair. If our situation was reversed, you wouldn't sit here and do nothing. Promise me. Okay? <sighs> Sorry, Frank. Quest 2. How is it? I mean, it's so busy, I haven't really had a chance to play it. It's not as fun as the first one. Really? No. You know, uh, back in Dixon City, when my dad used to disappear for long cases, me and Joe used to play, like, hours of Conquest. Keeps your mind off things, you know? Yeah, it beats being at the farm right now. I'm sure things will get better. From what I hear, you can't keep a Morton man down, right? Yeah, right. Thanks, man. <clears throat> oh. Hey, you. Hey, you look really nice. Too nice? Like, I'm trying too hard nice? No, just nice, nice. 
Callie, I told you, no one's gonna care what you wear. And I told you, I care what I wear. I want to make a good impression. And quote Socrates or something. That's all these rose grave people care about. My brain, I'm confident in. It's this that makes me worry. You got nothing to worry about. <laughs> Did I miss something? I told you. Frank and I are spending the day at Rosegrave. No, I would have remembered you telling me. It turns out the dean at Rosegrave used to date my mom in high school. So I'm going to go on, I'm going to ask him some questions. And I figured I'd tag along. Gives me a chance to see the campus. But you've seen the campus before? In pictures, yeah, not in real life. So when's that bus come? 20 minutes. So we should head out soon. It's bingo day in Gresham, so the buses fill up really quickly with the ladies from the retirement home. <laughs> really? <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. Don't, don't take the bus. I could drive you. Really? Yeah. We, we can't make you do that. You're not making me do anything I'm offering. And besides, who am I to say no to a road trip, right? It's a lot better than riding in a bus. <laughs> Thanks, man. Sweet. Thank you. Should be fun. <laughs> Phil! Miss Trudy. You're here. I am. Why are you here? For me! Now this you'll have to explain. I'm going to a sea cadet meeting. Joe, you know you're not allowed to leave the house. Come on! Look at us! Look at what we're wearing! We'd mess with a couple of sailors! There's a dangerous man on the loose. And what better cover than being surrounded by a bunch of kids dressed exactly like me? How do you figure? Because of the old switcheroo. Let another kid get taken while I slip away undetected. Is it immoral? Yes. But is it effective? Also, yes. Come on, we'll be fine. It's even being supervised by naval people. Mm -hmm. What, like retired officers? Most of them have been on boats. It's going to be even safer than here. And Phil's mom is even going to drive us. If I trust you with this, do you promise you won't take any stupid risks? Seek it, it's honor. Be back before dinner. Okay, thank you, buddy. Go, 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 go. Uh, well, after 1924, the organization went international and served in 42 different countries. Bye, Mom. Thanks for the ride, Mrs. Cohen. At first, the sea cadets only included saltwater bugs. But after Elton McLevin was elected for president in 1932, he realized that designation was limited. You gotta learn to edit yourself. I'm a passionate guy. Oh! Ah! Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I just remembered. I have a book on hold at the library. I, I really gotta pick it up before they find me. I mean, you know how it is. Uh, could I catch up with you later? You didn't even try making that excuse believable. I, I got really important things to do, Phil. But you'll miss the signing of the new constitution, and Hakeem's bringing fruit punch. Save me a cup. It's your loss, Hardy. We're gonna learn the bowl line today. That's the most important art in the bunch. Took you long enough. Feels a hard man to shake off. Well, not that hard. And you're sure you weren't followed? I'm slyer than I look. And I look pretty sly. Not in that outfit. Come on, I need a cover to get out of the house. And your cover was dressing like the leader of a marching band? Your sass is gonna slow down my investigation, Hooper. <sighs> okay, so what's the plan? This piece of fabric is our missing puzzle piece. Now all we gotta do is find the dirty cop whose jacket it came from. Don't say it like that. Like you're so sure JB's buyer's a cop. If you were there with me. We got confirmation that this comes from a police issue jacket. A police issue jacket that could have been stolen. Look, I'm not pointing fingers at your mom. You better not be. If you want me to believe that it's not a cop, you gotta prove it. I'm not going anywhere until you change out of that. You know the old sea cadet motto, right? Come prepared. Or make a plan. Whatever. My point is, I'm ready. I'm ready for anything. I've got a real future as a pretend sea cadet, Joe. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Trudy? Kitchen. Hey. Hi. How are you? Pretty good. 
Wow. I didn't know you painted so many. These are really good. Thanks. Are you preparing for an exhibit or something? Actually, Gloria hooked me up with a gallery. Oh. What's she getting out of it? Nothing. I think she thinks it's gonna smooth things over with me. She's wrong. As long as you don't owe her one. It's just that the boys need family right now, and unfortunately, she's family. Fair enough. So, what brings you by? Oh, I was uh, just in the neighborhood. You want a coffee? Yeah, sure. I called DJ. Can't have a good road trip without the right kind of music. What constitutes the wrong kind of music? I'm morally opposed to hair metal. <laughs> See, Callie, she's a music snob. If it ain't new wave, it ain't worth it. I'm cool with new wave. And if we don't find anything good, we can always play a card game. I spy. Never have I ever. That's not a card game. It is if you play it in the car. Never have I ever understood the rules to never have I ever. Never have I ever had fun playing never have I ever. Never have I ever wanted to sit in a car where people enjoyed playing never have I ever. Oh, you guys are clever. Yes. It's Kanika Khan. I was given this number by one of my associates. He said you have something that might interest me. The Estabrook piece. Do you want it? Possibly. I can get it for the right price. Get it first, then we can talk. Going up against the Nabokovs is a huge risk for me. I will need more than money. I will need cover. Get me the piece and I'll pay you, but the Nabokovs are your concern. I suggest you watch your back. <laughs> Rosegrave isn't a fan of subtle, is it? Are you kidding? This place is beautiful. Look at the architecture. And the grounds. It even smells beautiful. It smells like money. Are hey, you not coming? Uh, no, I'll wait outside. Okay. Is that your room? What's it to you? Nothing. Jeez, just making conversation. Your mom's got a lot of coats. This town gets a lot of weather. Seriously, how many do you need? Just because you only have one jacket. There it is. See? Not a tear in sight. A check for new stitching. Stop! My mom's not a suspect, and this is enough proof. Got it? Okay. So you want to go to Chief Cogs? Let's go. I read in the brochure that the chandeliers in the Great Hall were bought by the school's first dean back in 1931. Wow. Francis! Callie. Hi! So great to see you. Good to see you. Please, please, sit. I was delighted to hear that you had questions about the school. Curiosity is something we value here at Rosegrave. It was George Estabrook who said, intelligence is stagnant, but curiosity knows no bounds. I promise, uh, that's the only time I'll quote your great-grandfather, but uh, I've always liked that one. No, it's cool. We've got a lot of questions we'd love to ask you, so we appreciate you being open to it. Of course, of course. My motto is, I succeed when my students succeed. I know when I was your age, I could have used a lot of guidance. Well, it's actually something I wanted to ask you about. When you were our age, you knew my mother. We went to school together at Bridgeport, but that was a long time ago. I found one of her yearbooks, and it said, uh, well, it said that you guys had dated. Yes, 
Yes, we, we did, uh, but sometimes high school romances don't survive in the real world. Not that I didn't appreciate your mother. Uh, Laura was spirited, bright, brilliant, uh, an amazing young woman. Did you stay in touch with her after high school? I'm afraid not. We hadn't spoken since we were 18. Before that, did she ever talk to you about leaving Bridgeport? Stavros! Dean! You made it. Francis, Callie, this is Stavros Vasily, one of our top students here at Rosegrave. He's going to show you around and answer any questions that you might have about the school. But uh, we... Trust me, it'll be a lot less stuffy than talking in here. <laughs> Please. Let's go. <laughs> Music hall is right across from us. 400 seat auditorium, three grand pianos, and the acoustics are rad. Science library, just above us, 20,000 volumes on each floor. Six floors total. This is amazing. Amazing is nothing. This place, it is rad. <laughs> Not impressed yet, Legacy? Frank is very impressed. Mm -hmm. Just has a weird way of showing it. Yeah. He can laugh all he wants. The Rosegraves were leaders of the world and they. Everyone here is ambitious, smart, the best of the best. Right. We're different than those on the outside. And when you start school at Rosegrave, you join the elite. And then everything changes. Let me show you more of the school. Yeah. The cross from here is the East Quad. That's where you'll find the cafeteria. Rosegrave's head chef was the Admiral of a fine dining restaurant in Dixon City that consistently had a long way to the Food is out of this chemistry and biology labs. We have an extensive collection of books that you can read at any time. Hey, Liz. Kelly, you, you left his office a couple minutes ago. Do you think Rob would go? Him? No, I want to break in. In fact, that's a little intense. Did you see how uncomfortable he got when I brought up my mom? Maybe you caught him by surprise. Maybe. But I feel like there might be something to it. I want to break into his office, look through his files, see if I can find anything. I can't risk yeah. being caught breaking in. It could jeopardize everything. I know. Do you see how the decor has a Greek influence? Mm, mm. Yeah. Incredible. Oh, this is where we study. Liz is studying for the medieval history. I get it. It's your dreams. I can do this alone. It's fine. I said I wouldn't break in. I never said I wouldn't help you do it. Hey, Stavros. Yeah? I'm really sorry, but I think we're going to have to head out. Mm -hmm. My boyfriend's coming to pick us up, and I don't want to keep him waiting. But thank you. This has been really, really amazing. And good luck with the whole being the best thing. His secretary's right there. Then we're gonna get by her. Do you see how the decor has a Greek influence? What? <laughs> oh no! Seriously? Why were you sneaking? Go, 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 go. Young lady, what on earth did you do? I'm I'm so sorry. I must have knocked it over with my purse. I wasn't looking. Was it expensive? You're friends with the Estabrook boy. I wouldn't say friends so much. You're asking a lot of questions. Rosegrave values curiosity. Come with me. I'm fairly certain this wasn't part of the tour.
Are you sure this is Chief Colleague's house? Yes, I'm sure. You're up. Up for what? Crawling through the doggy door to let me in. You really don't think about things before you say them, do you? Well, come on. It makes sense. You're, you're small. Like a dog. And you smell like a dog. That's not as witty as you think it is. The tall man tried to kill you, not me. So really, you need this more than I do. <sighs> Should have brought Phil. You have no right to come in here you without- You lied to me. You said you didn't see my mom in years. You met with her weeks before she died. That's not true. It's there in your calendar. Frank, you need to calm down. Did you show the cops your calendar? You lied to them too. Lindy, would you please leave us a moment? I need to speak to Mr. Hardy. I understand you miss your mother and what happened to her was a tragedy. But I will not allow you to barge in here and accuse me of things that you've clearly made up. I will not tolerate lies. If you continue to behave this way, I will be forced to rescind your offer of admission and give your spot to one of the many thousands of applicants who would surely kill for it. Do I make myself clear, Mr. Hardy? Crystal. Colleague needs a decorator. This place is a dump. Like you do any better. Are you kidding? When I get a house, I'll deck it with a trampoline, pizza oven, and five TVs so I can watch all my shows at once. I pity your future wife. Oh, I don't want a wife. I mean, not that I'd never get one. It, 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 if someone cool came along, then... I'm gonna go search that way. Yeah, I'm gonna go that way. Hello? You were right. I did lie to you. About which part? I knew your mother in high school. Laura, she was magnetic. Force. How long did you guys date? Back then it felt like forever, but in reality it was no more than a year or two. Did she break it off, or did you? Does it really matter? Every little detail matters now. You inherited her curiosity, I'll give you that. <sighs> Laura and I were both from wealthy Bridgeport families. Our futures were mapped out. My mom never went to Rosegrave, why? She said that Gloria was writing her life for her, turning her into another privileged, powerful, rich Esterbrook heir. And she was turning her back on all of it, starting with Rosegrave. When I accepted the offer, she took it as a betrayal, never spoke again. Until a few weeks ago. What she reached out to you about is what got her killed. Laura was... She was murdered. That's what my dad thinks. For the past few weeks, it's what me and my brother have been trying to figure out. Frank, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Victor Nabokov is dead. When did it happen? It's unclear. They say it's within the last couple months. How did he die? 
Natural causes. He was no older than I am. I suspect the causes weren't terribly natural. <laughs> well, then. No, I can't say I ever met Victor. His father, Sergei, was a great friend to my father. Was there any news about his piece of the eye? Nothing. They could be anywhere. I know this is very interesting. Because I made a phone call earlier to an individual who claimed he could get me the Estabrook piece. He said he would have to go against the Nabokovs to get it. So my question is, if Victor is dead, who's employing this man? I mean, who's running the Nabokovs affairs? Whoever it is could be close by. We'll need to take precautions. I remember my first night at Rosegrave. Couldn't sleep at all. Kept trying to remind myself why I chose this school over the only person that I loved. But I couldn't find a good reason. You really loved her? More than anyone I've ever loved since. So one night, I snuck into this very greenhouse. I went searching for the most beautiful, brightest flower I could find. It was a tall, bright, purple orchid. I dug it out, and I sent it to your mother with a note telling her how sorry I was, but she never wrote back. Couldn't figure out if it was the flower she hated or if it was just me. Why did my mother's investigation into Bridgeport's powerful families lead her to Rosegrave? Because if you can control the future leaders, the millionaires, the people that are well-connected, you can control the world. But better still, you can control the world without anyone ever knowing that you're doing it. You're making them sound like they're a secret organization. That's what they are. What about this symbol? Where did you see this? It's everywhere we look. What does it mean? It's their symbol. Now, what did she uncover? You can't tell me that you loved her and then not answer my questions. We can't be caught together. Wait, I've got more questions. Wait. Meet me at the coffee shop on Oak Street tomorrow at 9. I'll tell you everything you need to know. Anything? No police jacket here. Seems we're over to in the evil cop theory. Great. I'm really glad I crawled through a doggy door. Please don't tell me that's who I think it is. Call it's back. We gotta hide. Uh. The window. Quick. better. Frank, when you snuck into the dean's office, his assistant was asking all these questions about you. Like, what you were doing here and what you wanted. It seemed like you're more than just an applicant to them. I think you're right. Did McFarland tell you something? This isn't just a prep school. 
This place, they're shaping the next generation of powerful people. Yeah, that's kind of the definition of a prep school. No, it's bigger than that. There's dangerous people behind this school. People with a secret agenda. Even the dean was scared to talk about it. What kind of agenda? I don't know. I think it has something to do with my grandmother and my great-grandfather and this weird power that they have over everything. Why has your grandmother been so good to me, then? What does she want to do with me? I'm not sure, but I think she has plans for both of us. I'm just glad that you're here, because I don't think I could have done this alone. Giving yourself enough credit. Ditto. You guys rich yet? What happened to you two in there? Let's just get out of here first. Colic is like an uncle to me. I've known him my entire life. Doesn't mean he didn't help JB steal the idol. Or that he might have let the tall man out of jail. He's my mom's boss, Joe. They talk to each other. She trusts him more than anyone. If he's corrupt, my mom is in danger. I've been in danger a million times since moving to Bridgeport. It's nothing she can't handle. We need to tell her the truth. Truth about what? Me helping JB? You stealing evidence from a police locker? Or the fact that we just broke into her boss's house? She's my mom. I have to protect her. And we will. But right now, it's safer if she doesn't go digging into something that might get her in trouble. <laughs> and Hakeem with the bugle! Oh, Who knew? The kid's a maestro in the making. Purely epic. Hey, Miss Trudy. Looks like someone had fun. Yeah, Joe did too, and he came to his first ever meeting today. Oh, you bet. Exciting stuff. I mean, I learned the bow tie. The bow line. And at least, like, five other knots. I mean, this guy, Phil, not king. That's true. Not to brag or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you actually doing kid stuff. May I say, what smells so great, Miss Trudy? Oh, my attempt at dinner. The same? Uh, yes. Uh, no. Okay, until next time. thought you left. Thank you for covering. Oh, no, you don't. I lied for you. You told me what you've been up to. That was the agreement in triplicate. We didn't have an agreement. What's triplicate? If you'd actually come to the meeting, you'd know. Look, man, I'm not going to tell you anything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hey, uh, Miss Trudy. Hey, Miss Trudy! Oh, hey, fine! Stop, stop. Yeah? Never mind. Spill it. Biff and I found proof of corruption in Bridgeport PD. Like in a film noir film? That's awesome! I, I always and wanted this to... This is why I don't tell you things. Just trust me, I'm working it out. But just please don't tell anyone. Seek that honor. Okay. Why are you still here? That uniform was a borrow, not a keep. All right. This thing is a G anyways. That's awesome. Film noir. <sighs> well, it's not every day you see the training camp for a secret society. Rose Graves more than just that. Come on. A little secret society is still too much secret society. Well, at least your entire family's not involved. It's not your entire family. It's not your mom, and it's definitely not you. I get the whole building an elite school. But why build it here? It's another great question that I don't have an answer for. We'll figure this out, Frank. Yeah. I gotta go have dinner. 
Thanks again. No problem. So, never have I ever realized my hometown was run by a secret society? That is a stupid game for you, right? <laughs> Rosegrave is a front for a secret organization that runs Bridgeport. They knew Mom was investigating them. I'll see your secret organization and raise you a corrupt cop. What do you mean? This piece of fabric came from Chief Colleague's coat. Found it at his house. You want to stay inside, didn't you, get? Hey, my wire didn't work, remember? I couldn't review that part of the conversation. Joe, if there is someone out there that wants to kill you, does that scare you? Because it scares me. Ta-da! Pot roast. It is? Not pot exactly. I made it in that thing, so, um, thing roast. Even better. What'd I miss? Nothing. Nothing. My mistake. I must have confused hunger for cold, deep tension. Pass the buns. Dean McFarlane resigned this morning. Cleared out all his effects by the time I got in. I was supposed to meet him. Uh, I was waiting. Really? What were you meeting about? Um, baseball. I'm a pitcher and you guys have a competitive team. That would make your grandmother proud. Do you know how to contact the Dean? He left without leaving a number. Isn't that kind of weird, him disappearing like that? Apparently, he had a family emergency. Right. Thanks. Baseball tryouts start in winter, Mr. Estabrook. I think you'd make a great asset to our team. I tell you to stop looking, but you won't stop. You can find the answers to your questions in your mother's past. You can find the answers to your questions in your mother's past. How are we supposed to find out about her? Ask Grandma? Even if Grandma was involved in this, she would never tell us the truth. What? You don't think she's gonna admit to Rosegrave trying to brainwash you into being a secret society you know, guy? No, you sound like Phil Cohen right now. Oh, you want conspiracy theories? Because I got conspiracy theories. Great, because my brain doesn't hurt enough as is. All right. I think Grandma wants you to run the entire society. I think she wants you to do what Mom wouldn't do. And I think they're the ones that hired the tall guy. And what about that Dean guy? You think he got scared and bailed? No, I think somebody stopped him before he could tell us anything. Frank, if they know about him spilling secrets, they gotta know about you asking questions, right? Guess so. I guess we both got targets on our backs. Go! Where is the piece? What piece? Give it to me. Hey, just leave us alone! Go. 